So one of the questions I've been getting recently and a lot is how do I land an international remote job as a digital marketer? And so in this video, I'm going to share from personal experience how to land really good paying remote jobs. And when I say really good paying remote jobs, I mean jobs that will pay you in USD and when you convert it is really, really good money. So if you want to learn, stay and watch this video to the end. Welcome to my YouTube channel. I am PC Timmy, a change maker, professional, and creative who is passionate about growing people and growing businesses. Like, comment, subscribe to my channel, and please always share my videos. It promises to always be impactful and insightful. I've been doing international remote jobs for over a year now. I have landed a couple, landed two good ones. Now, the first thing you should do if you're looking for an international remote job as a marketer is to decide on how you want to position yourself now let's say go back to 2019 when i was looking for my first remote job i said then i was holding a head of marketing title at a fintech startup but then when i started looking for other head of marketing roles for international startups i realized that the year of experience that they were looking for is way more than the years of experience that i had so i couldn't exactly do another head of marketing role almost immediately so and that, that was one thing second thing was the skill set that i saw for the companies that I was interested in, it was kind of different from how I was currently positioning myself. So I was positioning myself as a digital marketer. But then I would see most of the roles that I saw that were good and had good pay were performance marketing and growth marketing. Um, there were a few content strategy, a few digital marketing, SEO here, SEO here and there, but it was mostly performance marketing and growth hacking. And so I decided, oh, you know what, which of, the, how do I, which of them do I want to pick to position myself? And I picked good hacking because it was just really more of what I was interested in and what I really, what I really had expertise in, even though I wasn't calling myself that. Now it wasn't just a finding it out; it now became a I had to position myself that way. So I wrote my CV to fit growth and growth marketing or growth hacking, and put in achievements and job descriptions um, based on what I was doing now that fit that particular role for growth hacking and then, you know, start applying for jobs. So when I applied for jobs, I was getting much better responses because my CV now looked as one of a good marketing person, not just a digital marketing person. Now, there's some times where I applied for performance marketing jobs, and at those times, I also made sure that my resume spoke of more paid advertising and performance marketing than just the general digital marketing that I have done. So one, I identified the exact skill set, and I realized that, see, Depending on where you're looking for a job and when you're in your career, you might need to tweak different things. Sometimes you will have to tweak your job titles to not lie, but to sound it slightly differently. So that people who are reading your resume will understand um, or see that you are what they're looking for. Now, other times you might actually need to go back and learn the skills or additional skills that you need to be able to qualify for those job roles that you find. But hey, point is figure out what exactly you what kind of roles or the kind of job titles that you want to apply for now once you do that um, you've done your resume you've written your resume you found out the skills now how do you apply when you don't know where these jobs are the honest truth is that there are tons of places on the internet that if you search remote ro jobs remote full-time jobs you will see a lot of them like a lot of them like a lot of them I'm gonna put some of those websites on the description but I'll call some of them so my favorite ones are Angel List, We Work Remotely, and Just Remote. These are the three top um, remote job listing sites that I've actually used and I've really, really found very valuable. Now, um, Angel List is a place where um, tech startups, particularly tech startups, particularly, go out, put in that they are their job positions and you can see a bit of salary range there and job description and you have to apply for them and you have like your own angelist profile now how i use angelist most times is i typically just go to angelist to be able to um stock companies new companies and companies who have open roles and then I'm, i use filters so i use filters to say okay the exact job titles i'm interested in the exact and all salary range i'm interested in and also you can also pick the location are you interested in a company that works anywhere a company that works in europe or a company that works in uk or a company that works in the us you can actually filter the kind of listings that you actually see and then so when i see when, when, when i when i when i when i did that i was then a, a lot more precise i was looking for only performance marketing good hacking or 360 digital marketing roles and that was much easier for me to see that's why i like angelist because of the featuring part of it now we work remotely is not somewhere you can filter they just have a job board of job of of um sales and marketing roles 
and you just have to go there over and over and over and over again and just you know skip scrolling down for them and in just remote it's also the same thing you just see a list of marketing companies you can't filter so i typically use these three sites to stock companies now when i see an open owner that i like what i typically do is i don't apply on angel list or work remotely or just remote i usually go to the company's website and actually check their carers page I, and apply through their careers page um, the reason is because I just feel like on job boards because a lot of people are stocking job boards they'll be getting a lot of applications there but there's a high likelihood that they will prioritize the applications that are coming from their websites or I can do in both places so I typically find their website and exact on, usually, on, usually on their website that you find the exact way that they really like to hire some of them will take you back to angel list some of them will tell you to actually feel like a form on level or bumble or whatever some of them will actually send you an email but i usually trust the application method i find on a chaos page right? or i use that to verify and then apply through that and the third thing is apply there's this thing that says that uh, or this statistics i found that you have to apply for 100 to 200 jobs before you can actually get a really good role especially when you are not competing internationally because the truth is if you're applying for co companies in Nigeria, I don't think competition is as much as when you're applying for a, 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 for a company in the US or in North America or in Canada or in Europe. It's a, it's a different ball game. You're literally competing with the whole world. And that's also a really good experience because the more you apply, the more you understand how to apply, how to write your cover letters, how to write your resume, how to position yourself. And you begin to see gaps in your skill set or in your experience that you can actually feel because there's so much to learn you know so but yeah um don't just apply for one or two or three my first remote job took me four months to finally land it right so just apply 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 as much as you can an additional tip is you can also pick the specific companies across the world that you want to work for one thing i did one time was that i googled the top top um remote full-time remote companies in the world like companies that do remote first. There's some companies that hire, I need something to land. There's some companies that hire remotely, but only, only hire remotely within the US. Some hire remotely and hire only remotely within the US and North America. Some hire remotely, but hire only remotely in UK and Europe. And then there's some that hire remotely anywhere in the world. So of course, I'm in Nigeria, so I was very particular to companies that hired anywhere in the world, not just the ones that hired in the US, right? So I Googled, um, Com top companies that work remotely across the world and you find a list right and so i start actually stocking those specific i look at the, them there's a time i found the size of like over 100 companies i think i scrolled through all of their websites just to understand their culture understand what they are and the ones that i found oh i think i like in this company i might not find them on angel list or work remotely but every other week or every other month i'll remember them because i had a list of like top 10 and i'll go back to these companies and i will check if they have an open role that i'm qualified for so i saw I, while I was searching some I didn't see some I saw and I applied and I didn't get in but yeah but that's basically like the whole process it's a lot of work but the thing is once you get your first remote job <laughs> you probably never go back um, so yeah decide on you decide that you want to get it figure out the kind of roles that you want to get figure out the comments you want to get from and then use the site to actually get fun fact there's a company that's launching soon, Taj. You can check them up at Taj.io. And their mission statement is basically to help talent in Africa to actually land their next best role, right? Land remote opportunities, especially. Remote work is really good because of international exposure, right? I think it's particularly great because when when, when you're growing up and when you when you when you go to school, you are confined to the environment where your university or when your college is at right and that's basically all the experience that you have as it pertains to that area of school and um, when you start work you then become confined to the environment where your office is domiciled at however and so that that, that kind of limits the amount of knowledge that you can you could actually get um, and that also limits the market knowledge you can get so for instance if i work for all the nigeria companies it means that by default the market knowledge i really am an expert in is nigeria if i work to all the africa companies then the place where i'm really an expert in is africa but if i start working for a company that 
has target audience as the US, even though I'm in Nigeria, I will begin to think about the people in the US because those people are my target audience and that's a totally different market and different knowledge. So there's a lot of exposure you can get in terms of another location, another market um, that a nine to five that you have to go to work for, might not just give you. Another thing is culture. I had culture shock when I started my first remote job. It was just different. The way Nigerians run their companies and the way people are brought their companies, it was so different. And it was a paradigm shift in my thinking because now I realized that, hey, you don't have to be stressed to do work, to be productive. You don't have to, you can work with flexible timing, flexible work hours, work at night, work during the day, work at a beach and just produce good results. People could actually really care about your well-being. Like the culture shift is totally different and it's always good to learn how different people run things. Another reason is literally the flexibility. The flexibility that you can be anywhere in the world and work for anybody. I am in Lagos right now, but I can travel to Benin City and live with my mother for the next three months. And nobody in my office cares because I'm still doing my work and I still have internet. I can decide to go to Kenya. I can go to the I can go to Bali. I can I can go anywhere I want to be, and if there was no pandemic, I'll be ho- I probably would be traveling a lot. And I can still do my job and still get paid the way I want to get paid. And that's something that a 9 to 5 will not give you. So I don't necessarily need vacations and leave to just change location. If I get tired of Lagos or my, or my building, I can go somewhere else and still work. Flexibility is a big, big one. And also the fact that you get to actually work with people across different locations. So when it's not even just a market knowledge, it helps you to expand your network. Because now I have friends in Colombia. I have friends in Germany. I have friends that live in the US, in Tanzania. I have friends in, like, I have friends in different parts of the world who are like, hey, if you ever travel to my country, call me up, we'll hang out. And I probably would have never known these people and developed a really good relationship with them if we're not colleagues, you know. So yeah, those are my top four reasons for remote work. One, a different market knowledge. Two, cultural shift. That will be fundamentally different from when you're just doing a nine to five, but you have to go to office. Three, flexibility in where you are at a particular point in time. And four, a really good opportunity to expand your own network internationally. Anyway, guys, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions about net, landing your next remote role, please leave your comment below. I'm going to leave links of some of the websites I've talked about, Taj, AngelList, Work Remotely, or Just Remote. You can definitely check them out. Having questions, let me know. Thanks for watching the video to the end. See you next time.